Welcome again to another fan CNC TV. Today we're gonna watch a free for all on this map that I don't know, but it looks amazing. Urban map stadium, empty stadium because of Corona. So this looks like it's a recent map. We've got our human players to the top right corner. We have the pink. I think this is a vanilla GDI. It is Dan Basco. It is a vanilla GDI. On the bottom left is the orange nod. I think this is a vanilla. Nope, it's random. We'll see later on what kind of nod faction this is. Ah, this will be the black hand. We'll have at the top right is the red vanilla GDI. This is... Nick, also called Nix. At the right bottom is the green vanilla GDI. This is Daniel. No, it is Aikuza. So, this game starts. It's a free for all. Everyone on its own, on his own. So, this is a very, very interesting map. Never seen this map before. I don't know this stadium either. Ha! <laughs> Must be some kind of. It's not based on a real stadium, I think. Okay, Cabal squads from Matthew coming in to the middle, going to clash with Jimmy. Yep, going to clash with Jimmy, but Jimmy is going to die anyways because he goes right through the Tiberium. Dies by Tiberium and bullets. Here we go. This is Daniel. Top corner. Blue Tiberium. Has some protection near his harvesters. Watching his back for an early rush. He might also try an early rush himself. Yeah, looks like it. Pitbull rush from Daniel on the right side. Nick. A bit slow very slow where is your refinery where's that refinery so Nick is experiencing some delays okay he's got he's going for the barracks and then a refinery he, he is very late Nick very very late this might cost him the game because his refinery will only be put down while everybody already has a war factory and building units so nick i'd say nick is already delayed for a good minute two minutes even so he'll be on the back foot for the entire match unless somehow he does a genius move matthew with already two refineries while nick has no refinery yet <clears throat> Battle marker on the top. It's Daniel and Nick just clashing. It's this Nick can't see the color. Nope. It's Jimmy. Jimmy sending early scouts out to every corner of the map. <clears throat> so this map, you have wide entrances on the side so you can attack each other directly on the side. You can go through the middle, through these through these entrances in the stadium, cross the middle. Let me just take a look and see where's all right. Oh, okay. We have Daniel, two pit bulls. It's scouts. I don't think he's going for, <clears throat> for the pit bull rush. Sent out two harvesters or two, uh, two APCs. APCs aren't filled with anything, so it's not an engineer rush. I love these, I love these, uh, these metros or these rail, uh, railways. It's great. Makes this map, gives it more character. Here, of course, is the, is the, is the station. Nicely done, whoever made this map. And here is a statue of an angel. Nice. So no action yet. <clears throat> 
everyone's still building their army. Let's see what Nick is, uh, Jimmy's doing. No air, airfield yet. He is on tier two though. Drops a watchtower near his harvesters to protect any sneaky rush. Airfield now on the field going for his first hammerhead. Let's see if Nick has caught up yet. Nick, two harvesters. Well, with the blue Tiberium, you can catch up quick. The only problem is everyone has blue Tib. Okay, so Nick, very good. Turning off your power. He's making now a power plant. He'll drop the power plant and then turn back the power. Very well. Good job. There he is. Very good. But he is still lagging. He has no army on the field. So if he's rushed now, he's dead. Jimmy already pumping out units, ground units, shatterer tanks, preds, APCs, and hammerheads. So that's Jimmy's choice of units lately. This combination with these four units. It's a very good combination. Let's see what Matthew is doing. Matthew also on tier 2 has a secret shrine. Of course, because he needs that Black Disciple upgrade. Going for flame tanks. What Matthew could do is send flame tanks around the map. He could send flame tanks up through the back. Take out a refinery. Take out... Ooh. Well, he won't be able to take out the, the war factory, but he could damage some buildings at the back. Daniel's got a force already out, but Daniel has no second refinery yet. That surprises me. Usually Daniel also has a second refinery out. This must be that second refinery, but it is late though. Matthew 2. Let's see where everyone's natural expansion is. This map, I must say, doesn't have that much expansion points. There's only one and it's in the middle. So I am curious to see who will go to this middle expansion point, the first. <clears throat> Somebody should already go here. Matthew's the only one with scouts here, so what he could do is put one Cabal squad over here, one Cabal squad over here, so at least he can see on every side and see who is moving to the middle. What he could do is also just continuously waypoint his cabal squad so they can just scout this area so he'll just keep going around jimmy already having five hammerheads so jimmy has enough to go attack already make a quick guerrilla attack in and out with his hammerheads they're also almost all full eyes even filling them with zone troopers jimmy's got a lot of money then to do all this nice stuff three harvesters on the field not enough though at this point, you should have five or six harvesters. We should just take a look at Matthew. You should also have that many. One, two, three, four. One, two, three. No. Surprisingly, at this point of the match, you should have at least five harvesters now. Okay. Matthew looks like he's going to expand to the middle, sending his emissary. Does have a lot of infantry. But he doesn't have that big of a force yet, Matthew. He should be spamming out men right now because he is black hand. Daniel looks like... No, Jimmy has the biggest army right now. Jimmy has the biggest army right now. Let me repeat that. And it's a very good and well-balanced army. So this is great. Jimmy could already attack somebody right now. The, the risk of that is because it's a free-for-all, every time you attack... You leave yourself open to a counterattack from another player. So, so that's always something that you should consider. Do I attack now? Do I wait until my enemies kill each other? Nick is the... I think Nick's the first one with the tech center. Let's take a look. Matt, uh, look. And Daniel just goes. He's going all in on these ground units. Also has his crane on. <clears throat> Nobody has moved yet to the middle except for Matthew. Matthew's here. Open up your emissary now. Or maybe he forgot about it. Alright, so Nick has a small, sizable force now. Grenadier squads. He's making APCs, so then he'll have a balanced army. He's going for real guns. So Nick, Nick has... 
just looking at the army size, he has caught up because he'll have the real guns faster than anybody else. Nobody else have re has real guns. Maybe Jimmy does. Nope. Jimmy's the first one with real guns, and Jimmy's ready for battle. Jimmy is ready for that first skirmish, the first back and forth. He's got his hammerheads. They're ready to go, good to go. His ground force is here already. Also good to go, so he chooses to attack Matthew. Of course, he doesn't know. Does he know who this is? I think so, of course. Everyone can see who that is because you know the colors already of your opponents. Here we go. Ah, uh, this is the interesting part because Matthew's gonna attack Daniel to the top while Jimmy moves closer and closer to Matthew's base. So Matthew will later on have to attack and defend at the same time. Here it is. Here's the battle on the field. Let's turn the camera around. Tier 1 units. Black Hand against Vanilla GDI. GDI will win because the Black Hand is just not with enough numbers. The beam cannons. This is just a single beam cannon, so this is not gonna stand long. Now it's gone. The last of the infantry squads die off, so Matthew is in trouble now. Matthew is in trouble now. Where is your man spam? Where is your man spam? Ooh, he'll be in big trouble soon, Matthew. Little does he know Jimmy is here on the right side. Ooh, he does have one predator, um, one scorpion tank here, so Matthew can see. Let's take a look at what Matthew can see right now. Yeah, Matthew's not ready for this. He won't be ready for this. He only has eyes here. So with his eyes here, he would have seen this army coming, but into his field of vision, Daniel will enter soon. Da there he is, Daniel's already here. Daniel has appeared. Okay, so Matthew knows he's coming now. Matthew sees it on two sides. He's like, oh, oh, this is gonna be tough. It will, this will be tough to defend, but he has the man spam and the weakness of this army is infantry infantry he does have no money even though he has expanded his blue tip is gone Matthew is gonna be in trouble now and Nick is in the favorable position of not being in the heat of battle so Matthew just has to defend for dear life here his his tech lab is right in the front of the battle so he, he might lose his tech lab Matthew will hold off this attack he does have enough rocket soldiers here but Jimmy's already attacking him from the right side. So he'll lose his redeemer, his redeemer factory. Matthew has to, uh, yeah, he has to protect himself from the left and the right side. Jimmy's gonna take down this redeemer facilitating, or facility, what is it called? Facility, yeah. Aye, this is uh, Nick, very smart, going for an ion cannon. Jimmy also has an ion cannon. All right, so Matthew fought off Daniel. Matthew can focus his full attention on the incoming army of Jimmy. Jimmy here with Shatterer tanks, with Predator tanks and APCs. Jimmy just smacking down these buildings of Matthew. Matthew has to do a lot of defending now. You are in defense mode, but you do have defenders. Advantage, drop down base defense right now. He has to drop down base defense. His infantry fighting for deal life. Oh, his, oh, this is gonna be Ooh, this is gonna be exciting because his MCV is taking hits. Is he gonna throw the laser fence on it? Aye, this might be the end of, of Matthew right now. He has no, not enough man spam, not enough. Oh, he's gonna lose his MCV. I think he's gonna lose his MCV. Ah, his purifier even had the time to get that flame. But he's gonna lose the purifier. He's gonna lose his tier 2. His MCV loses his MCV. Matthew. Oh. Oh. This is a, a death blow for Matthew. Because Jimmy is not gonna be stopped. Jimmy's air units is just gonna continue on. Matthew makes no anti-air. He only has one. But it's all the way back here. It's got no power also. He's got no power. Matthew's gonna lose his entire base. Let's take a look at Nick. Nick's doing well. Let's go back to the army. Oh, Matthew losing units left and right. Jimmy right here, just smiling. 
because his army is being successful. But he was a little bit lucky that Daniel softened Matthew up with that first attack already. Matthew, if I was you, I would just sell up your stuff. You just... Oh... If you had one crane here, you could rebuild your army if nobody saw you from the middle. But now Nick is here too. Nick is going to start stealing your money. There we go. It's game over for Matthew. Matthew has nothing left. But he was in a bad situation from the start. Got sandwiched from left and right side. But he could have made more men. He should have had more men, I think. I think he should have had more men because he was the only one to move to the middle. So he had the most money from everyone. Matthew will take out this Harvester. Full, fully loaded. But Nick has got a nasty army here. Nick has enough to destroy Daniel. And Daniel's base is now abandoned. So Nick has free reign, can just attack whoever he wants. He just doesn't know it yet. Jimmy, yeah, he had time to build up a second army. But I think Nick will win this match. Because Nick had all the time to build his army. He has a lot of APCs. This is craziness. Nick has so many APCs. APCs even with zone, zone troopers inside. Zone troopers. Alright, so Daniel just grouping up his army over here. Alright, so now it's Jimmy and Daniel left to duke it out. Their two armies will clash soon. Let's turn the camera around. Here it is. But Daniel's gonna win this because he has overwhelming forces and Jimmy's group was a bit split up. But this will be an interesting battle. This is an interesting battle. Take a look. Yeah, Jimmy will win this. Because the slingshots are coming forward now. Slingshots are coming. This is an interesting battle. Let's see who's going to win this. Predator tanks against predator tanks. Railguns. Both of them have... No. Daniel doesn't have railguns yet. Jimmy might... Nope. Oh, if this one goes back and becomes heroic. Nope. He's going to lose it before it goes heroic. Jimmy's hammerheads come forward again. But... Daniel has enough infantry on the ground to take out these air units before they become heroic. Shatter tanks left on Jimmy's side. This was a very good back and forth. The only winner of this skirmish is Nick because nobody, there's no one here to stop Nick. Nick will just move and cruise forward. Nothing here. Jimmy has to mount a defense now. Defend yourself. Put down base defense. Yeah. Nick has a lot of anti-air. Yep. And Jimmy knows it now. He will lose heavy numbers. Real guns galore. Real guns galore. Look at this. All this blue beams going back and forth. Nick just enjoying this invasion of Jimmy's base. Nick's here with these... APCs just shooting down these hammerheads like flies. Jimmy doing his best to defend his base. Jimmy, where is your base defense? Drop down Guardian Towers. Drop down Sonic Emitters. You will. It's just too much. It's a numbers game. And Nick has more numbers. Nick is here. Jimmy's army, of course, was already here. Was already beaten. So he had not enough to defend his base. It was a bit of luck, though. Nick was a bit lucky that Jimmy wasn't home to defend his turf. So, but that's how it goes in free-for-alls. Sometimes you're lucky, sometimes you're not. So Nick defeats Jimmy. Turn, turn back the camera. Nick will just slowly destroy this base. Take down the ion cannon. Nick has less than two, two minutes for his own ion cannon that of course he will throw on Daniel. Daniel will get that smack in the face. If Nick throws the ion cannon right here, then that's the end of Daniel's production of units. Let's see, Daniel, this is all he has. He was already weakened by the fight from Jimmy. 
So Dan, uh, yeah, so Nick has to just finish this off quick. Just look at these real guns, man. You don't see that a lot. Real guns firing from APC, so that might be Nick's new forte. Nick Forte. APCs with real guns. With zone troopers inside. I'll call them zone APCs. Nick will get in the zone. So Nick just sending his units backwards or back to his base. He forgets one APC, but he'll go back to his base. Very smart. And then he can go back to his base. And then regroup. Of course, he's been remaking units. Let's turn the camera around to the original angle. I thought he would be remaking his base. Nobody yet moved to the middle. Nick made that entire army just from one war factory. That 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 is commendable. Here we go. He has more zone troopers. Daniel has one foxhole here, so he will know if Nick is coming. Nick's got a big army, man. It's a big, scary army. He's got the numbers. I'm just gonna analyze if Daniel can stop that army if it comes at him right now. Daniel, if the army fights here, Daniel will have defender's advantage. He just, he should defend. Just don't move forward because he might be able to drop down two sonic emitters, some AA batteries. No, just sonic emitters would be enough because Nick doesn't have any air units. Nick is pumping out juggernauts now, so to make him more dangerous in almost 20 seconds is that ion cannon. So Nick is, of course, waiting for that ion cannon. As soon as it's done, he will throw it here. But he needs to scan it first because he doesn't have eyes on Daniel's base. Let's take a look what Nick sees. Nope, Nick has no eyes on the base yet. He does have his radar scan, so my guess is he's waiting for that radar scan. Or in 10 seconds. Ah, Daniel, look. So Daniel does go on the attack with his hammerheads. Loses all his hammerheads, though. Like I said, of course, he doesn't know that Nick has such an army so Daniel doesn't know that the best move for him is to defend right now because no oh yeah this is risky this is very risky if he stayed in his base he would have had a better chance but now he goes on the attack I can't blame him I can't blame him because he doesn't know what what Nick has only I oh whoa, there it is I just missed it but so much damage Nick should have thrown it here though on the war factory because Daniel can rebuild. Daniel has his con yard. He still has some eco going up. Even though his blue tip area is gone. So there he is. Daniel's money is going to run out. Oh, he makes a third war factory. A third war factory. Wow, he should have expanded. Aye, so much blue Tiberium still here. He could have expanded over here. Daniel should know that, Jim, that um, the Matthew is gone. There, this is the end of the game, I think. Because once Daniel's forward line gets demolished, Nick will just continue to steamroll, kill that base. Nick overextending with the slingshots, so that's something for next time. Nick, don't overextend with your slingshots. Only send your slingshots forward if you see hammerheads or any other air units. There it is. Here is the last battle of this game, I think. Nick just taking over. He's got the numbers. The APCs with his own troopers in it. Daniel now seeing what he's up against. So Daniel might be thinking, I man, how am I going to stop this? Making pit bulls. Mm, yeah. Not that good of a move. He should just make predator tanks right now. Just predator tanks. But he, whatever he does, it's not going to be enough. You can't blame Daniel though, he held out for a long time. Nick wasn't attacked in the beginning, so Nick could just build up his army, but the army that Nick has built is very, very nice. Very well balanced. Let's take a look at that army from up close. Juggernauts. There it is, there's the game. Daniel throws in the towel once he sees 
the full force of this incoming army of Nick. So, not much to say from the end. It's just, this is how free-for-alls go. You're lucky, you're unlucky, but very well played by all the players. I hope you enjoyed this episode of Fan CNC TV. And congratulations, Nick, for your win.